Law enforcers of Reddit, have you ever come across a crime so stupid or ridiculous that you just let it slip? Not the US. To clarify for everyone asking, this was in South Africa in the early 90s. When I was in high school the rugby team found out I had learned how to drive, but not yet received my license. They all knew I did not drink, so one of them had the genius idea of inviting me to parties as the designated driver. We lost a popular kid to a drunken accident a few months earlier, so it was actually a good idea. It was a great arrangement, lots of parties, lots of girls and all I had to do was get them home in one piece afterwards. It went great for a few weeks, until one night. The police had heard there was a big party on a farm outside of town and decided to set up a roadblock. So I come driving up to the flashing lights, car filled with 5 big drunk guys, including one passed out with his head out the window, and little scrawny me, barely able to look over the steering wheel, and the inside of the car smells like a brewery, the officer takes one look at the car, asks me to step out, have you been drinking, uh, no officer, I don't drink, has me take a breath Eliza, zero, looks at me, can I see your driver's license? Oh, uh, sorry officer, I don't have one yet, I'm getting it next week, and I point back towards the car, but they have theirs. He looked at me, flipped his little book closed and said just take them home, next time I see you, you'd better have your license. In the US, we have a huge DD support movement, you would have probably gotten a medal or something where I'm from, plus I live in a really rural area where, yeah, underage driving is kinda normal as long as you have a good reason. I overheard this one last night, as I was sitting near two Indiana cops at Panda Express. Comma so this lady had a warrant for an unpaid ticket and missed court date. I bring her in, and it turns out that her address is wrong and she never got the court summons. The original ticket was for possession of a black base under 14 inches, and since she had missed the court summons it was now on her record. So if she goes to apply for a job and they inevitably ask her do you have any criminal history she's obligated to say yes. Now imagine if the employer asks why. I caught a small fish. My ex fiance was a cop for a redneck town where the people didn't have much money. He was called to the grocery store where a little girl about 9 was being detained in the manager's office for stealing a box of tampons. He said she had tears and snot everywhere and her pants had obvious blood stains all over the front. My ex then bought the box she was trying to steal along with 3 more boxes, some food, and milk. He then drove her home to a trailer that was falling apart. It wasn't so much the crime that was ridiculous but more the manager's reaction. I guess when my ex came in the manager was just screaming at this terrified 9 year old. I've been laughing at some of the other comments. This one made me really sad. I frequently, ordered when I was in uniform, let impaired care or control slide. If I found someone sleeping in the backseat of their parked car after drinking, it demonstrated to me a decision to not drink and drive. I'd often take keys, or drive someone home, but arresting them just seemed wrong. I was the lucky one once, not charged by a cop. In college my friend had a massive house party. I woke up the next morning face down in a puddle of drool in the bed of my truck. Went inside and and found out the cops had busted the party and everyone got underage tickets. Over 30 people. Except for me. Not sure if they took pity on me. Or never saw me. But they had my truck boxed in with squad cars. The lines on my face from the rubs of my bed liner took 2 days to hoe away. They never saw you. When a cop sees a college age kid totally passed out and not very responsive due to alcohol you wake up in the hospital. Not a police officer, but I witnessed it happen. I got a phone call from a police officer using my buddy's phone. Apparently my buddy, a jackass, got so drunk he fell out of his car in the drive through line at Taco Cabana. The cop told me I had 15 minutes to get there and pick up my friend. I made it in time and the officer helped me throw my friend the bed of my truck. He told me to take my friend home and when he woke up tell him he was a freaking idiot. The police officer was a homicide detective in the major city in which we lived, and he said he had real crimes to solve and to stop wasting his time. I wanna believe you guys literally threw him into the truck bed. A long long time ago, in a life far removed from my own. I had a nasty age addiction. I cleaned up my life and had been clean for 3 years. My friend had been learning to become a tattoo artist and asked me if I wanted one. 
to repay his kindness I picked up a 30 pack and some tequila. After about 3 hours of him digging in with the gun and most of the beers and booze gone we came up with the plan. We were going to go to the city and score some dope. Didn't take long and we accomplished just that. We found a nice quite dimly lot parking lot to pull in and get to get high. We break out the gear and started. He got his ready faster and got it done. I was out of practice and fumbled around for a bit. Just then someone knocked on the window. It's the cops. We roll down the window and they ask if we knew where we were. Before we can say anything the cop said this is the freaking police station parking lot. Are you freaking retarded they took the dope and sent us on our way and I now have 13 years clean thanks to that cop. That story was great in more ways than one. Thanks for sharing. There was this guy where I used to live who would walk around. Smiling strangely and approach people trying to shake their hands. As soon as he got to hold of their hand. He would try to kiss them. A friend of mine naively accepted his handshake and literally bent over backward trying to avoid the kiss. A couple of churches in the area had this thing at the end of their services where everyone would shake hands so this guy would show up to reap the harvest. The cops were called on him a few times but to my knowledge they never arrested him but just drove him far away from the area and dropped him off and made him walk all the way back. Reap the harvest. Very compelling image of the dude drooling over the thought of so many hands to kiss. Back in my drinking days, I was at a local bar getting hammered, as usual. I didn't think I was too far gone, but the bartender had a good eye and cut me off. I thanked him for watching out for me and shortly thereafter took my leave. I get about two dozen steps out the door and it all hits me. I slump up against a wall. My sense of balance is just gone. I'm listing to the side like one of those drinking bird toys, just trying to stay on my feet. I slide down to the ground and decide, yeah, I'm not going anywhere for a while, while sitting out there in my embarrassment, trying to wait out the effects of the booze, it comes back up on me, somehow in my drunken haze, I manage to elegantly puke to my left and my right, not getting a drop or a speck on me, I'm now positioned between two immaculate puddles of vomit, just biding my time before I can manage to walk back home, I don't know how much time had passed, but a cop shows up and sees me in my pathetic state. He starts asking me how I'm doing. Just fine. Officer. Thanks. And asks me a couple routine medical questions to make sure I don't need to go to the hospital or anything. He asks me if I drove. And I say no. I just walked. I leave the car at home when I go drinking. He puts on a pair of latex gloves and tells me he's going to get me home. He cautiously helps me up. And my balance is marginally better so I'm at least able to stand in place. He looks me up and down, looks at the puke, and asks, is that yours yep? Sorry. He looks me up and down again and says head, nice aim. He puts me in the back seat. First time I've been there without being in cuffs, and drives me home. I blacked out somewhere around getting in the car. So next thing I know I'm waking up face down on my living room floor. Three hours later with my keys on the table and my front door securely shut and locked. GG cop was nowhere to be seen. So yeah, the drunken fool could have been taken in for pie or some such. But instead cop bro took me home and made sure I was alright. Pulled a guy over last night whose license expired. Not suspended. Or revoked or denied. Just expired. Dumbfounded me. How do you go 5 years with an expired license? Told him to get it renewed. The thoughtless lapse wasn't worth a trip to see the judge and the fines. Sent him on his way. Comma the thoughtless lapse wasn't worth a trip to see the judge and the fines. Sent him on his way. That's how he got away with it for 5 years equals P. Prosecutor here. I came across one such domestic violence case during intake. The facts. Husband and wife arguing. Husband grabs wife's keys and throws them in the yard. Husband is charged by beat cop with criminal tampering. And technically, husband was guilty under the law. I've never written a faster motion to dismiss. My grandpa was a police officer in Houston in the 60s and 70s. He told me of this time where a lady called to report some dynamite she found in her own garage. When he arrived on the scene, he realized that said dynamite was actually a candle. So being real careful, he took a lighter from his pocket and lit it to prove it wasn't dangerous. The lady who called bolted from the house running from a lit candle. 
win-win situation right there. If it's a candle then she looks a bit silly and everything is good. If it's dynamite then at least he won't have to feel stupid for very long. I was actually observing the following exchange in court once. A lady received a ticket for a seat cushion violation. So, in my state, FL, if you are unusually short for whatever reason you get a restriction on your license that says you need a booster seat to drive. Makes logical sense. Here's how the exchange went. So miss whatever you're here for a seat cushion violation. Wait is that even a thing? Lengthy exchange with the state attorney followed, they put white noise and so we couldn't hear it but the judge was laughing her butt off the whole time. Well, okay that's a new one. How tall are you? 5 feet 2, your honor. So you're not that short really. Do you have a restriction on your license? No your honor. The officer said I looked really short and needed it. Wait, what? Case dismissed. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. My British spelling is apparently blowing people's minds. I've lived in Florida for 14 years but was born in England. I still spell the English way is all. I live in Florida and my wife is 5 feet 1 inches. I'm sharing that with her. As a young patrolman in the Air Force Security Police, got a call to an office referencing possible sabotage or theft of classified material. I remember thinking how this could a huge case. I was thinking ahead about all the questions to ask and who would have to get called in. I get to the office, get all the basic identifying information from the complainant victim. I asked her what made her think there was sabotage going on and she told me that the last couple days she's been coming at her work and ate on her 2.5 inches discs. Yes, I'm old enough for those, has been erased. So, I ask where she stores her disc. She turns to her whiteboard, and crap you not. Pulls her disc out from under a magnet. I actually stood there, blank faced in awe as this woman who developed complex systems for the military held this disc out to me. All I could say was mom, do you know what happens to a magnetic storage device when you expose it to a magnetic field generated by, say a magnet? Welcome to my life. Welcome to technical support. This is typical customer behavior. And then they expect you to fix it. Headask. I was working the metal detector at our court. I tell people to remove anything metal from their pockets and place it on the table before walking through. This one guy pulls out his plastic bag of weed and lays it out in front of me. I did a triple take to make sure it was what I thought it was. I told him that marijuana is not metallic and that he should keep that in his pocket next time. Since he already has some legal issue pending in court I decided not to pile anything else on him. I confiscated the bag and signed it into evidence to be destroyed. No charges. I see the guy around all the time now. Bringing weed to court is just so metal it would probably set off the metal detector anyways. Kinda late here so it probably won't be seen. My dad is a pretty hilarious cop. I've told a lot of his stories before. He gets a call one night late. Like 11 p.m. or something of kids vandalizing a park it's some lady calling. One of those nosy call the cops for everything types. My dad gets there and rolls up all blacked out to an area where he can oversee the park. After watching for a couple of minutes he clearly sees that this big group of kids is just playing hide and seek. My dad seizes his opportunity. He gets out of his car sneaks down to the park and sneaks up on three people hiding in this area. He gets up behind them where they're hiding and now they see him. One kid panics and starts to run. My dad grabs him by the shirt and whispers, Dude, don't freaking run. They'll find us he then proceeded to play hide and seek with them for the next hour or so and then took pictures with them after. Fast forward like a year I'm having a Halloween costume kick back at my house and some friends are over. We were all in our early 20s at the time. I think I was 22 or so. Anyway, we're all dressed up hanging out and drinking. My dad is out on duty but texts that he's gonna stop by to pick up some food and say hi. He comes into the kitchen and one of my friends jumps up and goes. Holy crap your dad is SGT insert dad's name and my dad looks at him and was like hey man. I haven't seen you guys playing hide and seek lately. What's up? So this lady called the cops on a bunch of early 20s people playing hide and seek cause they were bored on a Saturday night. A group of kids play hide and seek at night. A cop sneaks up on one, grabs him, and says don't freaking run. That's pretty terrifying. Until I read they were 20, I was a little worried. 
My grandfather was pulled over by the Bay Police for breaking the speed limit on a wave runner without a license. The cop said he had never seen anyone so old speeding before and let him go. I like his logic. We need to see weirder groups of people do illegal stuff so at least there would be at least one record of it in history. Not a cop. A couple of friends and I were driving down the highway to a friend's house. We took two cars because of the amount of people. A girl in my car has the good idea to moon the other car of people. She rolls down the window and just sticks her whole bum out. We would later find out her vulva was in full view as well. This is going on for about a minute until we suddenly realize there is an officer right behind us. Tailgating. He has clearly seen what is going on. And everyone in the car is flipping out. Until we realize he is laughing. Move the car over a lane and he jets right past us. TL. DR. Cop laughs at mooning on the highway. Pretty hard for a chick to show her butt without showing her vag too. If it's a proper moon, anyway. About 1999 or so we responded to a suicide attempt. When we arrived the gentleman was laying on the floor amidst a cloud of dust and sheet rock with a noose around his neck. In his grief he tethered it to a drop ceiling which could never hold his body weight. That's actually really sad. My good friend is a police officer in a really bad section of North Philly and he and his partner once got called to a house by a man because the prostitute he hired bit him and then wouldn't leave. They ended up driving her home but didn't arrest either of them. That sounds like the start of a zombie movie. When I was about 17, some friends and I got involved in a scavenger hunt. It was a tie, so the tiebreaker was, bring back the coolest thing you can find. We didn't get anything special, but the other group, they went to a dollar store type place that had a coin operated horse in front of it. It was about 1am, no other cars in the lot besides an 86 Nova driven by my friend. They start to dismantle this horse, eventually getting it apart, put it J in the back of the Nova with the head sticking out the window, and drive off. They get about 15 feet before the two cops that were watching them the entire time pull up. And they ended up having to put this horse back together, then made everyone ride it to make sure it still worked. My good friend was scared and crying, riding a mechanical horse. After I heard the story, I knew the cops probably thought it was the funniest thing they had seen in a long time. I am working as a renter thug while finishing off my degree, and have some pretty amusing stories. The best is from a grocery store in a bad part of town. So, picture a woman. A large woman. Nope. Larger. She's allergic to soap and showers too. Apparently. Where has probably never been washed. Enormous breasts. Enormous cleavage. It was stinky. I watched her grab a Kool-Aid packet. 69 cents. And stuff it into her bra. Then another. Then two more. I then watched her walk right out the front door. I gave the store manager 4 bucks to cover the loss. Sometimes it's just not worth it. You overpaid. Fist time posting. I was a cop for about 7 years and toward the last few years of that time. I found myself searching for more and more reasons not to take people to jail. I had drunks park their cars and give them rides. Teenagers smoking weed throw it out and be on their way. And realize that arresting people wasn't always the best solution to their mistake. Not everyone that can go to jail should to go to jail. One night I drove through a dark parking lot and noticed a lone vehicle parked in the back and a small light inside. I assumed it would be teenagers doing their thing, or someone smoking. I approached the car on foot and didn't use my flashlight until I was right up on the car. I turn on my light and see a guy naked, alone in the front seat of his car fapping. I tell him I'm the police and he rolls down the window. I ask what he is doing and he says. I'm jerking off. I shined my light in the back seat and saw he had a car full of groceries. Asked him about the groceries. He said, my wife gets pee when I jerk off at home. So I came out here to do it. Do you mind dumbfounded? I really don't know what to say. Instead reminding him that I could arrest him for public indecency. He laughs and tells me to go ahead. Taking a step back I thought about his situation. The dude just wanted to rub one out in peace. So I told him to hurry it up and be on his way. He thanked me and rolled up the window. Turning around I yell back at him, why do you have to be completely naked? He responds, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna freaking do it right. I laughed and walked away. I hope that man had a good fap. I love this story. Thanks for sharing and also for not reacting to the poor guy. 
had to prosecute a case where two teens, boy and girl, stole a pregnancy test and a box of condoms from a drugstore, recommended dismissing the case on some community service, told the judge I was doing so because it was a case of the two youngsters trying to close the barn door after the horse had already left, also recommended that the community service be done in a latex, free environment because the condoms were lamb skin. Judge fought an amazing struggle not to laugh. He lost. I had a motorcycle accelerate past me right as I was about to get off the interstate. He downshifted and took off clearly being an arrogant smartass. I merged back on and chased him even though I had no realistic chance of catching him. He continued to flee even after I initiated lights and sirens and attempted to get off at the next exit to lose me. I lost sight of him as he hit the ramp because it went down to the road at an angle. As I got to the exit I had to slam on my brakes as he was laying in the middle of the road. He had lost it trying to make the turn onto the surface street. He got up as I got out of the car and had his helmet in his hand. I drew my weapon and ordered him to the ground. But he was too busy slamming his helmet on the pavement repeatedly yelling, stupid, stupid, stupid. I did take him to jail, but did not charge him for felony evading arrest. I figured his totaled bike and sky high insurance premiums would probably prevent any future motorcycle related shenanigans. Plus he was kind enough to let me catch him in the first place. This guy was really close to a Darwin award. I'll tell my favorite story of a cop letting me go. I was driving late at night through a Texas highway with my girlfriend asleep in the passenger seat. It was 1am and I was tired, just trying to get home for the night. There was no one around for miles, so I was going close to 100 miles per hour. Well a cop decided to pull me over for speeding and I had no idea what to do so I jostled my girlfriend awake quickly to help me figure it out while I pulled over. She was in a deep sleep when I woke her up and started getting mad at me and crying for waking her up and I was such a bad boyfriend and yada yada yada. Well, just when she broke down and started bawling about how terrible I was, I rolled the window down to give a cop my license and I said in my best Texas accent I'm sorry officer, but it's late and if I don't get her home soon, her dad is gonna kill me. The cop looked at her crying and upset and just gave me my license back and said you better get going, son. And let me leave. As a Texan, I buy it. Especially in West or East Texas. Note, I do not work in the USA. I have no idea how such a matter would be dealt with in the states. I went to a call of a reported robbery. I get out of the car and talk to the chap who was standing at the side of the road. He starts talking 19 to the dozen about how two fellows robbed him. I start taking a description, establishing a direction of travel, etc. This chap is a fairly regular customer, public order, petty theft, etc. In gardening terms a hardy perennial, but it doesn't mean that he can't be a victim of crime. The story is as follows, my friend came into some money, he wouldn't tell me how he came by the money, but I have a pretty good idea. He smoked some weed with some chaps that he met on the street. It was good weed and they told him they could get him some more, as well as H and methadone, which was what he was really looking for. He then produces the remainder of the weed in a bag. I take the weed off him and look at it. This weed here. Yeah, officer, it's great stuff. They said they could sell me some more and some H. Okay, what happened then? Well, we came up here, points to a nearby block of flats. I gave the money for the weed and the H and they went off to get it. That was nearly an hour ago. Officer, I don't think think they're coming back. Right. Do you have any idea where they went? Not really. But it's not right. I dealt in good faith. Shocking. I put the weed down the drain where we were standing. Commiserated with my friend on the fallen nature of man and then sent him on his way. It seems you can't trust anybody these days. I am going to use so many of those sayings you just introduced me to. So many. Not a cop. But I was at an open air public dance where I came into contact with three teenagers who appeared to be very high on something. Later when I was going home on the subway, I saw that the transit police had stopped the teens. Our subway runs on an honor system, so I thought that they had been caught for non-payment. I offered to pay their fares, but the police told me they had been caught drinking alcohol in the station. At that point, one of the teens started crying and having a severe panic attack. The two cops looked at each other with a look that said do we want to deal with this? They found out where the kids were going and where I was going. 
our routes matched, so they asked me to chaperone the kids till the point where they got off the transit system. I had a case where a guy was charged with DV assault. A kid had shown up late for school and the resource officer asked him why. The kid said he hadn't wanted to go and that his dad had dragged him out of bed, pushed him out the door and thrown his backpack at him. The SRO then went to the kid's house and asked the dad what happened. The dad was like yep, I dragged him out of bed, down the stairs, pushed him out the door and locked it. I told him he couldn't come back in until after 4 o'clock. The SRO sent it in for charging and in the decline I wrote we don't charge people with crimes for being good parents. Yesterday, a woman asked me if a phone case could send text messages without the need to buy a phone. What is the dumbest most clueless customer you have ever dealt with? I work in customer service for a cell phone company so every day I hear the dumbest customer I've ever heard. But a good one was when a customer called complaining about international numbers calling and soliciting her. I asked what the number was and she gave me a standard 10 digit number. I asked why she thought it was international to which she said because the caller it says it's coming from the district of Columbia. When I was working internet tech support, I had a customer call us up because his net wasn't working. He said he hooked everything up but the dang thing just won't let me email. He then said the cable you sent me was too dang big. I told him that shouldn't be the case, and he said he had to resize it to make it fit into his computer. After a little more questioning, I found out he just took the box that had his network card, his modem and most importantly that CD with a huge red sticker on it that says run this first before setting up equipment, and chucked all that stuff aside. He then took out the ethernet cable. Tried to plug it into his 56k modem, when it didn't fit he took a knife and carved it down to make it fit. I just kind of sat there as he was furious because his service didn't work and we sent him useless equipment. When he finally let me get a word in, I told him he was supposed to run the CD and use all of that other equipment. He said he didn't want the service anymore and told us to cancel it, but I told him he signed a contract and I could set up an appointment for him for a technician to come out. He wasn't interested. I hated that job sometimes. He took a knife and carved it down to make it fit. Cringe. I didn't have to deal with it, but it was amusing listening to a waiter at an IHOP try to explain to a customer why they couldn't order never-ending pancakes to go. Just give me 10 or 15. I have been a waiter for years but by far the stupidest thing I've ever had happen to me at work happened when I was just starting out. I was waiting on a family of four and they all ordered ice waters. I brought them their drinks and then a few minutes later the mom waves me over. She says the outside of my glass is wet I stare at it and see the beads of condensation on the outside of the glass. Yeah it's called condensation. It's what happens when you have ice water in a room temperature glass she stares at me like I'm a freaking alien. And then I realized that this was my future as a waiter, dealing with freaking idiots. I took her drink and wiped it off with a towel and handed it back to her. I worked at a help desk. One time a lady called in complaining she charged her internet all night. And now it won't work once she unplugged it from the modem. I work in the maintenance department of a large hotel in Ohio. Have had a guest flip out because her room did not have a TV. I told her to turn around. She spun in a circle, no lie. I then told her to face the exact opposite direction from where she was and look onto the wall above the fireplace. She didn't say no. Oh. I thought that was one of those fancy digital picture frames. Thank you for calling Starbucks, this is Jeff. How can I help you? Yes, where are you located? We're at the corner of Main and Magnolia. And where is that? Do you know where Main Street is? Yes. Do you know where Magnolia Avenue is? Yes, that's where we are. Well I'm standing at that intersection and I can't find your store. Is it underground or something? Looks out the window and sees a woman who looks lost. Mom, turn to your left. Do you see a man in a green apron waving at you? Begins waving at her. Yes, that man is inside a Starbucks. Go there. That's not Starbucks, that's Quiznos. Mom, I'm very confident I'm in a Starbucks right now. You're not very helpful, click. I worked at a stop and shop in the produce department part time for a few years. There was a kid in there named Bobby who sold drugs but had a really good sense of humor. One day we get a call from a customer saying she found a spider in her grapes. 
He handles it properly and explains that sometimes bugs do come in on the fruit and that he was sorry that happened. She however says that she's bringing it in so we can test whether it's poisonous or not. Problem is, we don't do that. It's a bug. Kill it. She comes in 45 minutes later with this spider in a Tupperware container and starts asking me what we're going to do with it. As I'm backpedaling my way through the conversation Bobby walks up saying oh you're the spider lady he grabs the container and notes how big the spider is which freaks her out a little bit. She asks him what we are going to do with it and with the most serious tone on he just says probably going to shake him up and see if he'll fight the other ones we have out back. Then he just walks away. Lady went up a shit on me. I lol'd. That's it. Best response ever. I work for a bank. And customers will sometimes call to ask how they can access their account online and do online banking. I told this older woman to go to bankname.com. She started yelling and cursing at me that I made her go into her email and that she can't believe I'm reading her emails. I tried explaining to her that I can't see her computer as we're talking over the phone, and she probably just got into her email because it was her homepage or the last page she viewed. She wanted nothing of it. No matter how many times I kept asking her to find the address bar and type bankname.com, she said that it kept bringing her back to her email. The conversation lasted 45 minutes. She was yelling the entire time. I pretty much wanted to shoot myself in the head. Back in college, I worked over the summer for a tour bus company in Washington, D.C. While driving past the Washington Monument, a woman asked me how do they get all the flags to fly in the same direction? We had to call the Department of Wind and put in a direction request. Working in hotels I have met quite a few dim bulbs. One night a woman stormed into the lobby screaming about how our parking garage did not have enough clearance for her jacked up Hummer. I explained that there is uncovered parking across the street, and if her Hummer did not fit in the garage, she could park there. She got irate about how it was unsafe and demanded I, this is a direct quote, go outside and raise the parking structure with a stick or something. I politely explained that was physically impossible for me to do, and she said well, then you shouldn't be working with people. I worked Geek Squad once and a customer told me his iPod gave his Jeep a virus and that's why he was having engine trouble now. What is this I don't even. In high school I worked at a local hardware store. We also refilled propane tanks for gas grills. After a summer or two of doing 10 or more tanks a day you get good at guesstimating how full a tank is just by picking it up. One particularly hot day a customer comes in and sets his tank down next to me and asks for a fill up. I pick up the tank and inform him that the tank is full and does not need a fill up. He looks pretty agitated already with this short exchange and says that he checked that it was empty and would I just fill it up. To this, I inquired how he checked. There are several ways to check, one being by the weight of the tank, another is the thermal strip on the side, which his tank did not have, the other is to pour hot water down the side and feel where it gets cold. His reply assured me that this was one blithering idiot lucky to be alive. He said he checked it by holding his cigarette lighter in front of the valve and opening it. To this I replied, you ought to write to your congressman and representative because they saved your life today. This tank has an OPD safety valve on it that prevents the gas from coming out without anything attached. He walked out without another word and with a very red face. I once had a customer bring back a laptop she bought the day before claiming it was broken. She said it wouldn't open. I asked her if it was Windows not loading up or a program not opening. She said the laptop itself wouldn't physically open. I took it out of the box, opened it up and just looked at her. Her mouth fell open. She looked at me and said oh, it opens that side. Me and my sister tried for an hour to open it up last night and couldn't she had been trying to open it from the hinge side. I work at the Philadelphia Zoo. One day I was carrying a chicken to the exercise yard. A man was eagerly following me waiting to see what animal I had inside the carrier. The chicken was reluctant to leave her carrier at first, and when she finally exited the carrier I said, good bird. Then the man asked me, why are you calling it a bird if it's a chicken I didn't know how to respond without making him sound like a moron. Don't worry, sir, she just thinks she's a bird, so we humor her. My friend works customer service at Canadian Tire. The other day someone tried to return a flashlight, claiming it wouldn't light up. My friend looked down at the flashlight. It was a hose nozzle. 
Canadian tire actually smells like you're inside a big tire. I saw an outrage piece of white trash storm into my local AT&T store as I was shopping. She ran up to the counter and screamed at the salesman for selling her defective iPhone. She said that she had only used it for 2 days without charging when it suddenly shut off. She plugged it up, even hit it against her table, but nothing would make it turn back on. The salesman smiled, took the phone, held down the lock button, and the iPhone turned on. The lady flipped him off and ran out. I can't believe she managed to use an iPhone for 2 whole days without having to charge it. Once, while working in the travel section of a bookstore, a customer asked for a globe of Britain. I got a lot of daft requests but that floored me. I worked as a lifeguard at a public pool last summer. We had a strict no water wings policy. Those little suckers are death traps. So this woman is putting water wings on her kid next to the pool, and I politely inform her that we do not allow water wings, and have life vests available for free literally 5 feet from where she's standing. She becomes so infuriated that I would dare to dictate how she treats her child and tons of other crap. So I call my supervisor over, and as he arrives and is speaking to her, the kid jumps in the pool, water wings slip up his arms, and he's suspended underwater, jump in and pull him out. Woman is furious that I would have the nerve to touch her child. How dare I? TL. DR. Save the kid's butt cause his mom thought water wings were safe. TL. DR. Being a lifeguard does not give me the permission to make physical contact with another. This is the news at 10. Top story. Pool fatalities goes up as lifeguards are no longer allowed to make physical contact with an individual. They may however provide words of encouragement. Customer, my computer doesn't work. Me, is the monitor on? Customer, of course. Me, what color is the power button on the monitor? Customer, black. Me, can you press the power button on the monitor? Customer hangs up. This is why I'm convinced we need a troubleshooting 101 course in high school. I never read instruction manuals for anything, but I'm savvy enough to know that if it's not working, 9 times out of 10, it's something I did, not a product defect. When working as an EMT, I had a patient, client customer whatever, call 9-1-1, because he couldn't burp. At 3am, we arrived to find a male in his 40s who was very upset that he ate a bowl full of cucumbers and had not burped yet, and it's been over 20 minutes. I always burp when I eat cucumbers. Always. I tried nicely to talk him out of being transported. Patted him on the back and all that. Nothing. He insisted on going to the hospital and according to state protocols, I took him. Man oh man was the a stuff p. Complete waste of resources. I'm not a nurse, but but after chipping a bone in my foot, I was sitting in the pacta. There's a woman sitting next to me. I'm in a wheelchair. And she asked what I did. I told her and she said she was there for an ingrown toenail. It was completely ridiculous. People did that all the time. I can think of two from my time at working at Petco. I had a guy ask if we sold condoms for dogs. While I somehow managed to explain that we didn't with a straight face. I really wanted to ask him who would have been rolling M on if we did. The second was a lady who called saying that her Labrador was throwing up blood. And do you guys sell a pill that stops this? I gave into the undisciplined side of my head and irritatedly responded that if her child was throwing up blood she probably wouldn't be going to Walgreens to find a drug for it. She'd be going to the doctors and she should probably do the same for her dog. That job scared me with the amount of people that were totally clueless on how to raise animals and yet had small children. When working at Walmart Electronics around 8 years ago, I dealt with a sudden torrent of people returning wireless products. They were furious that these devices needed to be plugged into charge. I had customers insisting that the other employees said their phone keyboard controller ETC would absorb electricity from sockets as they walked around the house. We had to put up wireless devices do not charge wirelessly signs around the entire department. My mom wanted blueberry with teeth for Christmas last year. It's a sad state that I knew what she was talking about. Blackberry. Bluetooth. Not mine, but a friend told this story in college, and it always amused me. She worked in a camera store, and this was the early 90s, so pre-digital camera era. This woman comes in, wanting to get some photos developed. She hands my friend the whole camera, 
Not unusual. Apparently a lot of people didn't know how to get the film out after they were done with a roll. So this part wasn't uncommon. My friend examined the camera. And. My friend. Um. Mom. There's no film in here. Woman. That's okay. I still took the pictures. My friend. But there's no film in the camera. Woman. I know. But I took the pictures anyway. So please get them out. My friend. But. You would have to have had film in the camera first. Woman. It doesn't matter. I press the button. There are pictures in there. Please get them out. And so on. For quite some time. It ended with the woman storming off. Convinced my friend was incompetent. I still use a film camera and I think it's hilarious when. Mostly. Kids become confused and aggravated that I won't show them a picture immediately after I've taken it. <laughs> Worked at TB Games when I was 18. In a city in Canada known for its rednecks. A man in his 40s came in and spent at least 3 hours browsing every single title on the wall. He refused my help several times and eventually came up to the counter with 5 brand new games on almost every system we carried. After ringing in his selection of Cabela's hunting, NASCAR racing and UFC fighting he paid and left. Several hours later the man returns. He throws open the front door. It was a standalone store. And yells what kind of crap show are you running here he is red in the face and stomps towards me and throws his bag of games onto the counter. None of these work. This is a crap store. What kind of business? Man rants and yells at me for a minute or so before he decides to take a breath. I asked him, you tried the games in your Xbox, PC and PlayStation and none of them worked? His reply I just got that new player from Walmart this afternoon and none of these games work of course. He doesn't know the name of the disc player that he bought was. After several painful minutes and him showing me the Walmart receipt out of his pocket. He bought a DVD player. TL. DR. Man buys video games from me and tries to play them in his DVD player. Screams at me for 20 minutes because it doesn't work. I used to work at Radio Shack and I had a lady come in and ask for a radio capable of getting broadcasts from the Middle East. I showed her a few. She purchased it and asked me to help her tune it. I found some stations from various Middle Eastern sources. Tuned them as she stood there with this puzzled look on her face. I asked what was wrong and she looked at me with this seriously grim expression and said. How am I supposed to track terrorists if they don't speak American? Without speaking, I refunded her money and went on the only smoke break I've ever taken. I don't smoke so I just ate french fries. Worked in an ice cream parlor. A woman asks for a chocolate ice cream. I ask if that's scoop or soft serve and she says scoop. I give her the scoop ice cream and she says no I meant the other chocolate ice cream. We had one of those soft serve machines that produced different flavors. So I pointed to the photo of the chocolate serve on the machine to confirm and she again nodded. When I handed it to her she got really angry and yelled are you stupid that's not what I wanted. After much confusion it turned out that by chocolate ice cream she meant vanilla soft serve with chocolate sprinkles. She snatched the correct order out of my hands and flounced out in disgust. Flouncing is really the only way she could leave that situation. I work in a grocery store. We once had a sale on a big thing of fresh chicken. The wings were $9.90. And the breasts were $9.95. Weird pricing. I know. But the signs clearly labeled them correctly. There was also a display for closed dated chicken that was $3 off. And these were also clearly labeled. This jackass guy comes up to my register with 3 chicken packages and throws them down on the belt. I smile and say hello. And he says. How come you're charging me more for some chicken than the others I tell him because the chicken with the red label is close dated. And management needs to sell it quickly, therefore making it cheaper. He then started getting more aggressive. Why in the heck did you put out bad chicken? You a retard or something? At this point, I'm a little shocked. But I grab the chicken and ring it up. Now wait a minute. I never said I wanted that chicken you're trying to poison me with. I ignore him. Void the chicken off the transaction. And ask him if he needs help with anything. He retorts. Yeah, you dumbass. Ring up my chicken. I'm starting to lose it a little. But I grab the first package of chicken. Which happens to be close dated. And scan it. I look up and he's giving me the dirtiest look I've ever seen. I grab the second package. The $9.90 wings and scan it. Immediately. You overcharged me. I show him the sign. 
and the label, but he still rants on about me overcharging him, and ready to get this guy out of my hair, I grab the last package of chicken, the $9.95 breasts, and scan it, shockingly enough, he thinks I'm making a conscious effort to rip him off, yet again, you freaking kike. Who do you think you are stealing my money like that after a solid 45 seconds of screaming? He finally pays the total and storms out. The story doesn't end there however, as he returned the next day. My dad is a manager, and he swung a pretty nice deal on gallons of Simply Lemonade. He bought an incredible amount of lemonade, and put them for sale at $1. Still in abid mood from the night before, I'm pee when I see him strut up to my register. He throws the gallon of lemonade on the belt and gives me the glare. I make sure not to greet him this time. I scan the lemonade and tell him the total, $1.07. As you might expect, you overcharged me. I reply, no, I didn't. He goes on to tell me I'm a dumbass, as the sign says $1. I have to explain to him that his total is $1.07, because juice is taxable unless it has more than 70% fruit juice and simply lemonade is only 11% lemonade. His reply, you're retard. You're the reason this country is going down the shitter. I don't want your dang lemonade. He proceeded to grab the bottle and throw it at a display of paper towels nearby, causing quite a mess. He stormed out, screaming, I'm never spending a dime here again. TL, DR, people are jackasses, and customer service positions suck. This happened just the other day. Two middle-aged women come up to my counter and order their drinks. After ringing them up I tell them their total and they tell me that they're going to wait for their friend to pay. Perfectly fine. I tell them their drinks will be waiting for them when they're ready. I finish making their order pretty quick and place their drinks by the register. Five minutes pass and they come up asking if their drinks are done yet. I said yes. Just been waiting for them to pay and they proceed to flip out saying how they were just planning on coming back and paying with their friend. So essentially they wanted me to give them free drinks and trust that they'd come back to pay. I do not think so. Crazy eye patch lady and company. I do not think so. They sound like a couple of sneaky pirates to me. Back in my best buy days, a woman came in complaining that her iPod had a virus. I turn it on and it's working fine. She says it only appears when she connects it to her PC, so I hook it up to our machine. It connects, and the do not disconnect message appears, complete with red no symbol. There. That's the virus. What does that mean? It means your iPod only has 7 more days to live. It has eye cancer. I'm so sorry. Old person. My cable isn't working. Your service sucks. Me. I'm sorry to hear that. Is the cable box turned on? Old, it won't turn on. We've lost power. Me, it's not going to work without power. I'm sorry. Old, the because your service sucks. Someone in the thread mentioned the plasma truck to come out and refill the TV. I've had an older woman refuse to buy or even possibly look at plasma TV because she didn't want that gas in her house killing her grandbabies. I used to work at an insurance agency. A guy came in for a quote on auto insurance, and let's say it came out to $300. Don't remember the exact numbers. He said he'd think about. I told him the quote was only good for 30 days and if he came in after that I'd have to run his information again. And he said that was fine. Well, he came back in and it had been more than 30 days so I had to redo the quote. This time it was $250. He was furious. This isn't what you told Emmy before. I calmly said sir. I told you before rates can only be guaranteed for 30 days. Also, this is lower than your last quote. Guy no IT isn't. Sir, this one is $250. And the last one was $300. So this one is lower. Guy no IT's not. At that point I knew I had lost the argument. If a man refuses to acknowledge that one number is greater than another, there is simply nothing more I can do. I just kind of looked at him, dumbstruck, until he walked out angrily. TLDR. Man refused to admit 300 is greater than 250. Sounds like a proud graduate of Verizon Math School. A woman once asked me to combine two different styles of mylar balloons. A star one and a zebra one specifically, and make her a god bless your home balloon in the back. Florists don't make balloons. 
This is the same woman who refused to accept, and didn't understand, the concept of sales tax. She must have been from Oregon. I shouldn't make fun of my own father, but yesterday he said he likes the internet with the new sites, but he would also like to be able to have the internet where he can shop. Well, we can get the cable with the sitcoms, but not the sports. I can see where he's coming from. Not a customer but a lady I almost worked for said this. Many moons ago I was called by a lady who owned a repair shop for TVS and home appliances. So she wanted to add PC repairs to her services. She contacts me and offers me 50% of the charged price and since I wasn't working much at the moment I agreed. She calls me to the first service and wanted to be there for the first repair to see how I treated the client. So we are at the client's home. And this is where it all starts. I ask her what's the problem and the lady tells me the PC doesn't turn on. So I sit next to it switch the on button and it turns on. She then says it turns off after a while so I check to see what antivirus it had etc. Then I hear her go to the kitchen with the PC owner and she tells her her microwave wasn't heating the food. She opens it and sees it's a bit scratched and proceeds to say the stupidest thing I have heard. Well since it's all scratched up the lasers can't bounce off the walls and that's why it's not heating up. I fassa palmed so hard. Then the comedy gold came. The 7 year old kid that was there with the owner of the house said. Microwaves don't work with lasers. She then proceeds to argue with the kid. Making up stuff. Finally the kid comes to the PC. Politely asks me if he could use the PC for a second. Goes into Wikipedia. Looks for microwave oven and prints it. Before the kid showed her the article. I simply stood up called the lady up and said there was nothing wrong with the PC and left. I never worked with that lady again. TLDR. Lady says microwaves eat food with laser 7 year old kid calls her bluff with a printed wikipedia article. I leave before they add me to the stupidest argument I have heard. 7 year old kid becomes my hero. Serious, what is the stupidest thing you've ever heard someone say with confidence? I couldn't make any banana nut bread as the store was out of banana nuts. This from a 45 year old co-worker who liked to talk like he knew everything about anything. When we tried explaining there was no such thing as banana nuts, he refused to believe us and stated we just never go to the specialty shops. Honestly that gives me hope that the world of customer service helps this confused man. Oh banana nuts like banana nut bread, right, hand him walnuts. This is all from one person. Are you stupid? Japanese isn't a language, it's Chinese. I thought circumcision was when they chopped your penis off and sewed it back on. I am an ancestor of Sir Isaac Newton. I know all about evolution. That all of the animals are robots animatronics. I work at the San Diego Zoo. One more. When using the penny squishing machine, they'll say all of these pennies are pre-made. They don't really crush the original penny. Okay as a kid I kind of thought the pennies were pre-made until my brother and I used one and the dates matched the pennies that came out. And they were warm. Little boy, mommy, what is the moon made out of? Mother, the moon is made out of, of gas. Little boy, oh, overheard in an Independence Day fireworks crowd. I am glad more and more kids will be asking Google this question rather than their parents as their access to the internet improves. After suggesting to a long time BMW owner who was in the market for a new car to look at Audi Mercedes, they replied that they have no interest in German cars. He believed that the B in BMW stood for British. British mobile wagon. Someone in the middle of a group said that the only reason that it's illegal to have sex with goats is that it can produce mutant offspring. The two other people nodded in agreement. I didn't correct him, I just walked away. A friend of mine, and her mother, once told me that they did not believe in space. I was too dumbfounded to pursue an answer as to why. In high school. A girl the same age said chocolate eggs are laid by bunnies that drink milk. Tried to convince her how ridiculous this was for a few minutes until she walked away frustrated. She didn't even say chocolate milk. Oh no, she may have been eating the little chocolate eggs that rabbits lay. SHHH the deaf people might hear you. Japan is a city in China. You have to change the condom every 5 thrusts. Last one was told to me by a 17 year old. Oh this one actually takes the cake. 
If a woman is pregnant and she has sex with a man other than the baby's daddy it will change the DNA of the baby a very confident woman in college told me this. In my high school US history class, advanced placement, mind you, we were watching Obama's first presidential inauguration, and one girl said why is everyone making such a big deal about Obama being the first black president? Thomas Jefferson was black. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. Bill Clinton was also black. When I lived on Bainbridge Island in Washington state, several locals claimed it wasn't a real island because a bridge connects it to the mainland. Them. I don't wear a seatbelt because if we get in an accident I want to die instead of getting paralyzed. Me. What if wearing the seatbelt is the difference between getting slightly injured and getting paralyzed? Them. No. I don't want to get paralyzed I'd prefer to die. Me. Do you not accept the possibility that you could be paralyzed because you didn't wear a seatbelt? Them. You don't understand. Me. Click it or ticket. I'm not driving you if you're not buckled. Them. This is why we don't hang out much anymore. Them. I just want to be paralyzed. It's just kind of a fetish thing. I had a teacher who once told the class that he couldn't believe none of us knew how to spell the word beautiful. He then proceeded to write beautiful on the board whilst saying, full, of, beauty. Remember that and you'll always spell it right. Working at McDonald's, ringing up a girl's order, it comes to like 4 bucks and some change. She hands me 4 quarters and the change. I stare at her funny, me, you're short like 3 dollars, her, ha, huh, no, here they are. Points to the quarters in my hand. Me. No. These are just quarters. At this point I remember thinking maybe she had some silver dollars and gave me these by mistake. Giving her the benefit of the doubt. You know? Not just assuming she's retarded at money. I was so wrong. She takes one of the quarters back. Looks at it. Turns it around toward the front. And points to the text at the bottom beneath old Washington that says quarter dollar. Her. No. See. They are the new quarter dollars. You'd think I'd lose my crap and laugh or assume she was joking. But she was too serious. It was disturbing. I was weirded out. Me. No. That means it's a quarter of a dollar. It's a quarter. It's 25 cents. Four of them add up to one dollar. You need three more dollars. Her. Oh. Okay. And then she digs in her purse and pulls out some dollar bills and pays for her food like nothing happened. The kicker? She also worked at that McDonald's. Usually in the front taking orders, handling money, and running food. I work in food service, taking money as well. I want to know if her drawer was consistently over at the end of her shift, because management must have loved her. How is it my responsibility to read my bill? In reply to finding out that a customer was paying for HBO for 4 years on her cable bill and she has never once read it. A friend of mine thought that wine was vodka mixed with grape juice, even though two of her roommates were wine and viticulture majors. I guess somewhere in her mind she thought these girls were spending 4 years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn the right ratio of vodka to grape juice. This is related to my favorite fallacy about wine, that red wine comes from red grapes and white wine comes from white grapes. It's logical. It's just also completely wrong. High school teacher Jerusalem and Mecca are the same exact city, but it has two different names because of different religious groups. I bet he was thinking of Istanbul and Constantinople, at least I hope so. Was having a conversation about the periodic table of elements with a friend of mine. Over the course of a few minutes he dropped some serious bulls. The periodic table has exactly 36 elements. My favorite element is water. All of the elements are essential nutrients. Humans require small amounts of all elements to stay healthy. Breathing in anything except pure oxygen will kill you instantly. The elements only make up some parts of our world. Some things are made of entirely different, unique substances, such as wood and glass. I haven't thrown up yet this year. I must not have eaten enough. She thought your body stored all the food you ate and you just puked it all out once a year. Got into an argument with two of my roommates about how many holes there are in female genitalia. They insisted there were two. Vagina and anus. They were so sure of it that I started to doubt myself. We are all women. Guys no. There are three. I am 100% positive about this. Well that would mean you peed and had sex in two different places. Comma yes. 
Yes it would. You do. Eventually had to do our Google image search to convince them. They had an orange is the new black episode about this. I couldn't believe this could be taken as a realistic argument between women. I stand corrected. That the Armageddon was beginning after my friend's stepdad, alcoholic, saw the moon when the sun was out. Of course you can legally rape somebody, as long as it's in self defense. To date this has been the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Haha, <laughs> defensive rape. Trees make wind. Her logic was that the only time trees move is when they are creating wind, and she got borderline violent when I tried to point out her mistake. To calculate how long it would take to get from point A to point B at a constant speed, you take your MPH and whack it in half. 60 miles per hour equals you will go 30 miles in an hour. You have to take into account how fast the tires are spinning too. A girl once told me she wasn't having sex for a year because her hymen would heal and she would be a virgin all over again. Sounds like she was on the receiving end of that great pickup line. Hey, you know if you don't have sex for 6 months your hymen grows back and you have to go through that painful process all over again. You can definitely fall pregnant from BJ's. Bless her. Poor dear. We had a long chat on sex ed after that little diamond. After the Blair Witch Project came out, I was visiting my grandparents and some of my other relatives at my grandparents house. There was an award show we were all watching, and the three cast members of the Blair Witch Project came out to give out an award. As soon as they walked on stage, my uncle said in all seriousness wait, I thought those three were dead. It took us about 10 minutes to convince my uncle that the Blair Witch Project was a movie with actors playing parts and not a snuff film. I cringe every time I think about the time I did this. I had a solid 20 minute argument with my friend that South Korea was an island and that Japan was landlocked. All while living in South Korea. I confused the names after a long night and had to be shown a map because I thought everyone was fricking with me. I'm not the brightest. Well, in geopolitical terms, South Korea basically is an island. Nobody's driving through North Korea to get there. You either fly or sail. I can't study liberal arts because I'm not a liberal, she's a music major. Me, one day I think it would fun to visit China. Friends gf, yeah but which part of the continent would you go to? Me, China. Friends gf, yeah, I know but where, the continent is really big. Me, China is in Asia. Friends gf, no, Asia is a country in Europe. Next to China. She said it so much I doubted my own geographic beliefs. This reminds me of the time I had to break the news to a room of full grown men that Egypt was in fact in Africa. In high school, one of my classmates thought that they seriously discovered a way to time travel. She said that if you got on a plane, went close to the North Pole, and flew in circles around it, that you could go forward or backward in time depending on the direction that you flew. I think her reasoning had to do with crossing the international date line, but I didn't exactly stick around to find out. My otherwise brilliant roommate in college told me I couldn't get a plant for our dorm room because plants turn oxygen into CO2, and it could kill us, he said it with a bunch of people in the room, and we all laughed thinking he was kidding, but then he was insisting he was right. I actually got embarrassed for him when we had to google how plants work to show him. He somehow just had this very basic lesson switched in his brain. Google how human respiration works, and he'll be afraid to have roommates anymore. Brother's wife while looking at a plane flying in the night sky. How does the plane keep from crashing into the stars? Live in rural Oklahoma. Public education here is not the best. Ro. Gilded on my first ever comment on reddit. Thanks kind stranger. I'd also like to thank my deep red state, whose fear of teaching anything that would contradict the predominant religious beliefs and incredibly low pay for educators helps provide fertile ground for this type of ignorance. It would be an adorable question coming from a 5 year old. New England is a state. This was a Pats fan in a Texas bar. I was like what? He fought hard and long about how it was. I've got two. One. Pluto is a moon, right? 2. People saying the Mexican countries to refer to everything that's south of the US. Waiting at a stop sign with an old girlfriend driving. 
when she all of a sudden pulls out into the very busy intersection and nearly causes multiple accidents. When I ask her what the heck that was about she says, well, if you are waiting at a stop sign for more than 2 minutes, you automatically get the right of way. Those other drivers were buttholes. A girl in high school wanted to know why the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor if they had to fly all the way across Europe and mainland USA. The teacher looked befuddled, smiled and said you do know the earth is round, right? In 8th grade, a girl in all seriousness asked my history teacher if it was possible to walk on water. She also asked if George Washington walked in our school. Sure, just need to freeze it first. Several years ago in Seattle, Microsoft makes the best computers in the world. Way better than Apple me. Microsoft only makes software. Him, yeah right buddy. Explain how Windows is on nearly every dang computer then. Exactly. My ex-roommate was bragging about how his brother developed a perpetual mobile for infinite free energy, but had to lay low because the energy companies want him killed. I offered to debunk his schematics for free, since I'm a physicist, but I was accused of just wanting to steal the idea to win my instant Nobel Prize. Dang. Foiled again. I guess I'll never know how the Earth's magnetic field produces free energy. An ex-friend of mine told me his average, per game in bowling was 320 plus. Even after I pointed out that a perfect game was 300 he still argued until I eventually just shook my head and walked away. My puppy is so stupid. It keeps biting me on the nose. You shouldn't put your face so close your untrained puppy's face. It sees you as just another puppy. He's just playing around when he bites you. Comma angry. What do you mean? He sees me as just another puppy? I don't have any hair on my face. This one dipshit in high school was insisting to his girlfriend and a friend of theirs that India was a continent. He was so sure of himself until his girlfriend googled it and showed him the result. Wish I could say that I wasn't good friends with that moron, but I get to see him in the mirror every day. Well, technically, it's a SUB continent now. It used to be a continent in the past, millions of years ago. So you were maybe half right, definitely at least a quarter. We should go to a Nirvana concert before they get older or anything happens to any of them a 33YO friend of mine 2 years ago. I didn't have the heart to tell him. Humans can't get fleas. Quote from my friend whose pets all have fleas and has a brother that clearly has flea bites down his leg. I told her an amp. Proved to her that humans can in fact get fleas and later that night she says that her mom got them before and it wasn't that bad. I'm friends with a freaking idiot. I actually don't know if humans can get fleas in the same way a dog can, but they certainly bite and it's awful. The US. Government spends over 6 trillion dollars a year on welfare programs and food stamps. Do your homework before you talk to me about entitlement programs. This was in 2014, when the federal budget in the US was less than 4 dollars trillion total. Pet owners always like to gush about how smart their pet is. But we all know not every animal can be a genius. So, owners of less than bright pets, what makes your pet so special? Notably, this cat is not blind. It will walk into walls, stumble, spin 360 degrees and do the cat I meant to do that pose and mew, then walk right into the wall again. He also hates cuddles, but is 100% non-violent, and will instead cycle through different sounding meows I guess hoping one of them will get you to let him go, which is so adorable. Mew, Mao, Mro, Mra, Mreen, Naya, Nyoa, Mran, Myra, never a repeated noise, it's great. I really want a video of the cuddle hater hating the cuddles you give him. If I have a fire in the backyard my special dog likes to wag his tail in it. He didn't learn the first time his tail got singed so now he has to stay inside. I once had a cat that burned a bunch of fur off her tail by hanging it over a burning candle. Only stupid thing she ever did. That I saw. Anyway. My new dog learned how to give paw in a few days. That's the end his accomplishments however. He does however sniff out methane like a bloodhound. If anyone lets out a toot. He'll run over and sniff their backside. No toot is too silent for my fart sniffing dog. Far found. My cat will just jump into the shower while it's going. She is just so excited and jumps right in and gets mad when she's wet. 
I know reptiles aren't typically known for their intelligence, but I still wanna talk about my leopard gecko. I got him a new food dish the other week that was built so that mealworms couldn't escape, and no matter how hard he tried he just couldn't figure it out. It's literally the same as his normal dish but deeper but I guess he couldn't figure out the depth. I had to go back to using his old dish. I got him a new cave and it took him almost 3 weeks to figure out he could go into the hole on the front of it and hang out in there. Meanwhile he would crawl around his tank looking for his old cave. He assumes my fingers are worms and has tried to eat them several times. When he eats his mealworms, he misses. A lot. He's a really bad hunter. Mealworms don't really move a whole lot, but they do wiggle and crawl a little. He will look right at them and not comprehend that they are food sometimes until I push them around with a fork. And then he will try and eat the fork. If nothing else he is a very amusing pet. I had a leopard gecko in the 90s. He was also really dumb. To this day I question how such an animal could survive in the wild. They are so derpy and helpless. Like walking meat burgers. My mother-in-law had a really dumb dog. We had an exterminator out to our house to remove the wasp's nest. So for the days following, I would find 5100 dead and dying wasps in my house when I got home from work. So I would take the vacuum and suck them all up. One day I suck up the wasps, and then ate 10 Cheerios that my infant son had dropped on the floor. So my vacuum now contains at least 500 dying and dead wasps, and under 10 Cheerios. My mill dog Peaches ate through the vacuum bag, which was made out of the same material as seat belts ate through the paper bag inside, and ate through hundreds of wasps, to get to those 10 Cheerios. He can't imagine that was worth it. Very spicy Cheerios. My dog liked to jump on the bed, and roll over on his back for a belly rub. He tends to favor the edge of the bed, and has rolled completely off numerous times, but never learns. This morning he did the same trick at the top of the stairs, and managed two complete barrel rolls before writing himself. My heart was in my mouth. He was fine. My cat will dig a hole, squat and pull a pee where he is standing. So outside of the hole, then turn around and try to figure out how to cover his mess and won't understand why it's so difficult. My cat uses the litter box and then instead of covering his business he pours at the walls surround the litter box. So none of it gets covered at all. My GFS cat is bow legged and thinks it is the king of the jungle yet simple tasks for a cat, like balancing on the headboard of our bed or walking on my lap ends with slipping and falling. Honestly this cat trips, falls, and wipes out a minimum of 10x. That I notice, every day. On top of this he has an obsession with freaking blankets. You'll hear a feral sound in the next room and walk into him standing awkwardly over a blanket while he slowly releases his bite on it, casually acting like nothing was happening. I'm convinced he thinks he's outsmarted us when it comes to his continual taking advantage of innocent blankets and assumes he's the stealthiest cat this world has seen. For these reasons alone I love him. Not for his third favorite pastime of crapping on top of the litter box. Oh no, there's a storm. Owner, let me escape this house. I'll be safe outside. Let her go outside. 30 seconda later. Owner, open the door. Quick. I let her in. Five minutes later, the storm is still going. Eh maybe it's safe outside now? Very cute though, a cat thinking things must have improved. An optimist. My cat fights her own tail daily, including hissing, pouncing, and general cat screaming. She also gets pee at it and saunters off like it somehow isn't still attached to her. My dog would startle herself awake by her own farts and then growl at them. Sometimes she would whimper. She also would cry every time she saw herself in the mirror. My other cat is actually fairly intelligent, except that she was a terrible huntress. She would get pecked in the head by birds and just sit there, letting them bully her. My cat literally did this 20 minutes ago, screaming, biting, pulling out fur. Then, nothing. I just sighed and got the Swiffer to clean up the new hairballs. My cat Zuko. I got him less than a year ago when he was a tiny kitten. And literally the first thing he did was run into the glass door. Okay. Free pass. Kitten never saw glass before. He still does it. He sees something moving. I.e. His reflection. And pounces directly into it. Also when he gets hyper he'll run at full speed on hardwood. Only to be unable to stop and slide into walls. He's the most loving cat. 
sleeps next to me every night and always demands attention, but omg he's so dumb. My sister's dog ran into the glass door every morning, for 10 years, if you put a towel over his head he would lay down and go to sleep, he was an idiot, never met a stupider animal. My cat won't eat her food if the bottom of the bowl is visible. When I see her sitting in front of her dish just staring at it, I'll move the kibble around a bit so that there's no gap and suddenly it's acceptable to eat. This actually may be because the bowl is too small by kitty standards. Some cats hate things touching their whiskers when they eat so the food on the edge of the bowl is whisker sensory overload and they don't want to eat it. I have an axolotl called Taco who is so dumb he struggles to eat. He knows that the spoon equals food, but he attacks the spoon rather than eat the food I'm dropping in. He's such a good little flesh potato. A brack of frick you. My dog Norman has one solution to every problem. Lick it. Want attention. Lick a person. Feeling sleepy. Lick your bed. Want to get out through a closed door. Cry a little. Then lick it. No matter what puzzle life presents him with, he licks it. AWW. Someone can't hold their liquor. My beloved black kitty Boo passed a few years ago. She was so sweet and peaceful and loving. The most non-confrontational animal I've ever known. If another cat smacked her, she cry and run away. Never stood up for herself. But if you were ever feeling sad and alone, she'd be right there with a head bump and a MRRR. While I loved her dearly, she had one recurring behavior that always made me shake my head. Every Christmas, my wife insists we get a live tree. I'm not a huge fan of this because of the mess and the upkeep and worrying about disposal. Regardless, every year a live pine is set up in the living room. Boo loved the Christmas trees. She would nap on the skirt under them, drink the water that was in the base, and eat the needles. The problem was that the needles would upset her tummy and she'd throw up, and yet she would not stop eating the pine needles. Over and over again, she had no pattern recognition. She would barf up a pile of needles, go get a drink of tree water, and eat some more needles. For over 10 years we continued the cycle, each Christmas, and every December I'd spend half my time cleaning up little needle bombs of kitty bath. In all other regards she was a sweet, adoring cat, but the yearly pine needle barfing buffet party made me doubt her intelligence. Unfortunately, before she passed she taught a kitten this behavior. He's not much brighter than she was, as every Christmas he also eats the pine needles until he pukes. But after he does it once, he won't do it again until next Christmas. Who knows, maybe it's his homage to his old friend. That might be the sweetest bath base story I've ever read. My dog will beg for food from the table and then fail to notice that you've dropped a treat for her. This is the same dog who will come running across the house because she hears smells a yogurt being opened. God, my mom told me that in the middle of the night, she wanted to eat something. She looked around the main floor, and saw that no one was awakened with her. She goes into the kitchen to grab a popsicle to eat, only to turn around and see my dog patiently waiting right beside her, staring at her like she hasn't eaten for two weeks. I have a cat that will scratch at the door to go outside, and will immediately run to his favorite patch of concrete and lick it like he's trying to sharpen his tongue prison style. We keep bees, and have a less than intelligent dog named Banjo. Now, he is at least sentient enough not to mess with the hive. But unfortunately, the hive is set in a spot where our new guests often think is a good place to park. So a friend pulls up and parks. Banjo runs up to the fence to excitedly bark and greet them, and he inevitably gets stung in the face. He retreats just long enough to get the bee off of his face, then runs right back to bounce around and immediately get stung again. This happens until our guests move away from that area, or we can call Banjo away from the hive, because I'm sure as crap not about to go drag him out of a cloud of pee off bees. We'd move the hive, but it really is the best location for them. I'm not sure why our guests all naturally decide to park right in front of the beehive. More than anything in the world, our cat wants to be able to sit on the 2 inch wide window frame. Every once in a while he tries so hard to jump up there, but it would be physically impossible for him to sit on it with the top window pane flush up against it, you'd think he'd stop trying to do the impossible, but no. Well, someone has to believe in him, since clearly you don't. 
I have a large lab retriever mix and he's afraid of his own shadow, but the best is strollers. I think those cheap toddler strollers you can get for $10. Absolutely terrified. Especially if mommy is pushing it around the house. It's hilarious. I have a wooden replica sword that my one cat is terrified of. Any other piece of wood. Whatever. But that one sword. If you even so much as pick it up he bolts like the hounds of heck are on his trail. I want to disclaimer this by saying that my cat can be smart. I answered and asked about the smartest things he did. But a hunter he is not. He is really really stupid when it comes to that. Cats are known to be quiet. Right? Mine can be. Too. Unless he is trying to catch a bug. Or a mouse or anything. Then he managed to step on every single thing that will make noise. And then will give his loudest meows he can. At least 5 seconds before he tries to pounce on the thing. That ran away a long time ago. Mine would triumphantly bring home leaves. His natural prey was the newspaper. He would often manage to kick himself in the face. And frequently bit his own tail and then wondered why it hurt. He was not the brightest cat. I don't know if this makes my dog stupid. But here it goes. I had to go out of town overnight last week for work. And asked my neighbor to watch my dog. My neighbor might be one of my dog's favorites people so I figured there wouldn't be any problems. I called my neighbor the next day to let him know I was on my way home. And to give him an ETA. A couple minutes later I get a text saying. Call me. I'm crapping bricks thinking she got out and ran away or something. It ended up being the opposite. He couldn't get her off the sofa. She would roll over on her back for belly rubs and wag her tail. But she would not get off the sofa to go out. He told me the only reason he knew that she moved was that she was on opposite ends of the sofa each time he came back. So, it wasn't as bad as I thought. But I was still kind of worried. I get home and she's still laying on the sofa. But then headed upstairs and emptied her food and water. Then she immediately ran to the gate to go see my neighbor. My cat named Slants. His name is such because when we found him as a kitty one side of his whiskers were burned off to almost no length. Because of this he walked sideways and his head was always titled at a 45 degree angle. He is the most friendly and downright passive animal I've ever met. We all thought his whiskers were due to abuse. Until he jumped right onto the grill while my uncle was grilling steaks and burned the other side right off. At that moment we knew he was special. Other things he has done have included, laying down on a table with half his body hanging off and eventually falling off, not landing on his feet, also repeatedly not making a simple 3 foot vertical jump and falling on his head. He likes to meow repeatedly for no reason and just a few weeks ago I found him almost dead behind a water heater, there was nothing back there and hardly any room for him to fit. Luckily he made a full recovery, to whatever full is for him, my favorite animal ever. But he is definitely not all there. My cat refuses to eat food out of a bowl. You can put down fish in a bowl and he won't eat it. He'll just sit there and whine. Put it on a plate and he'll gobble it up. No bowls. My cat does not understand that he can jump vertically. If I'm playing with a toy, as soon as it gets higher than he can reach with his paws, he loses interest. Or just looks at it like a dummy. He never tries to jump. It's like he just doesn't realize that's a way to get at things that are higher. When climbing on furniture or the counter, he only ever jumps horizontally too. Like he climbs up to the top of the couch, and then uses that as his launch pad to the counter, TV stand, or his cat tree. My cat was convinced the framed mirror on a bathroom door was a portal to another dimension. Watched him carefully set up and then launch himself right into it. The portal was closed though, and he didn't get through. I nearly died laughing. Normally I do think he's a very clever boy but that was just... The stupid fat little crap can't meow. Somehow in her training as a kitten, her mom just forgot to teach her how to meow. Now this wouldn't normally be an issue. Unless you end up with a cat who loves cool dark places and constantly locks herself into cupboards. And then can't let us know she wants out. Once someone notices we haven't seen fancy pants in a while, we have to search every cupboard in the house. Usually listening for tiny grunts of discomfort, because she's fat and hungry at that point. My cats haven't learned, even after months of daily conditioning, that my hand is, in fact, not a spider that they can capture and eat. My dog once fell in a hole. We went out walking and he wasn't paying attention to where he was walking. He wasn't injured. 
being catahoulous, both of my dogs have tremendous prey drive, so intense it is, those two derps hunt and eat all the bugs, stung by a bee in mouth, let's eat another, love those two goofballs to death. My border collie Aiko is scared of water, but at the same time she also isn't too bright. While on holiday in Germany she was playing with my German shepherd by the lake when she spotted a couple of ducks sitting there. She started stalking them in the typical border collie way. Now she was so focused on those ducks that she did not notice they went into the water. So Aiko followed them into the lake. I thought she might notice when she got wet paws but no. She went all the way in until she couldn't feel the floor anymore and then panicked like mad. We had to go after her and drag her out. Oh, hey, another crazy person with both a border collie and German Shepherd. This definitely sounds like a border collie thing to do. They get so fixated on things that they basically lose their brains. And you know the second she came to, she was probably like oh my god how did I get in here, witchcraft. My Labrador loves to eat dirt from a flower pot we have in the house and refuses to stop no matter how many times we get onto him. Also if you're gone for more than 30 minutes the next time he sees you he'll get so excited he pees himself. My cat Lazy had a different name before, but Lazy is much suitable name. She is special, like Kevin special. If you play staring contests with her, she would go cross-eyed and fall over. She doesn't know how to properly chase lasers. Her reaction time is so poor that she reacts long after the later has passed through. It almost looked like she is running away from the laser. Poorly. Then after couple attempts, she just roll over, go cross-eyed, and lie there. Can't catch a toy on a stationary string. If she raise both front feet, she would fall slideways. She doesn't eat properly, just inhale and bath. So her food is strictly controlled. She can't poop properly. She thinks if her front legs are in the litter, she is clear to poop and look confused when finding her poop outside and then spend 5 minutes trying to cover it with invisible sand. She has yet learned how to lick herself properly. She does not have the gross motor skill to bring her paw up to her face to lick. She tries and it looks like drunk man trying to lick popsicle. She has zero self defense skills or instinct. A 2 year girl of a friend dragged her through 3 large rooms by her ears to show her daddy the kitty. At the end. She just lied there on the ground looking at everyone confused. We attach her to a broom and push her around the hardwood floor and dust her off outside. No reaction. She has no idea how to socialize. If her brother come near her, she would slap him across the face and scream like she legs are getting sawn off when he pounced her. Even then, she would just lie there. Sometimes she may attempt to run away from things. Poorly. She would walk faster for like 5 feet and then give up. Her running never end well. She will run into something always, like ramming full speed, which is a pretty slow jog, into a door. Her brother would try to teach her to hunt. Yes, cat can get frustrated and his frustration is hilariously palpable. She cannot even properly hunt a hairband on the ground. She would prepare to pounce it for like 5 minutes and then miss, sit on the hair losing it, give up and lie down. She is very fuzzy though, like a soft warm teddy bear that purrs. She is 13 year old. My dog walks backwards when transitioning from the linoleum kitchen floor to the carpeted living room dining room floors. It's not just the entryways either, she'll walk backwards from one end of the room until she's reached the carpet. I've no idea why she does it, there's no bad memories with crossing the threshold as far as I know. It's just a thing she's always done. She has done it in every house apartment we've ever been in. I've had her since she was a pup and she's about to turn 14. She's an amazing snuggler and the most loving dog you'd ever want to meet. But she's dumber than a sack of rocks. Bless her. My dog is special. I will play fetch with him he is really good at watching. Tracking the ball and returning with it for another round. However, if he loses sight of where the ball landed, then he absolutely cannot find it because instead of looking down and searching, he sniffs up in the air for it. I have literally watched him trip over the ball but he continues to believe sniffing in the air will help him find it. I love my dog. My green cheek Konya Ferrer is definitely special. She shows she's happy by thumping her face on the ground. Not her beak. No no. Her face. She turns her head to the side so her beak is out of the way, and slaps her face into the ground while cheeping to show she's happy. Luckily she's as sweet and loving as she is stupid. So she's still my little baby bird. 
My dog is getting pretty old, so she gets a bit of a pass on being dumb. My sister's dog, however, is real special. She tends to be scared of men, and when she met my so it took a fair bit of time and encouragement for her to become friendly with him. She was sitting next to him while he patted her when I left the room to get something. When I came back, she jumped up and started to bark at me, only to pause, look at him, and realize her mistake. She has always remembered him since then, and always grumbles a little at us both whenever we visit. That's a common problem with dogs, especially if they have a history of abuse. My German Shepherd didn't like men, especially if they were drunk. She was a victim of abuse by her previous owner. My cat doesn't know she has claws, or how to use them. She will dig them into the ground while walking and trip herself at least 5 times a day. She will also jump up on the cat tree and slowly slide off instead of using her claws to climb. My dachshund wears diapers. He's neutered. Since 5 months old, he's 6 now, but he marks everything. I'm a former vet tech, so not uneducated when it comes to training, but I've tried every trick I know and he's just stupid. He pees in his own water dish. So washable diapers it is. My dove makes everyone feel good about themselves because he is always doing a mating dance at people. He's not a smart bird. If you move, he wants to date. We had a pug that was so special that she would forget how to operate her back legs. She couldn't back out of a corner or tight spot, or walk backwards at all. She needed help getting upstairs. She'd walk her front legs up two stairs or so, and then look around confused. She couldn't figure out why her butt wouldn't follow up the stairs. That's not stupidity so much as just being so misshapen that her physiology is about as reliable as a fiat. Pugs are an artificial mockery of natural selection. My dog is almost 5 and she'll walk past me with my boxes in her mouth like I'm not even there. It's just a slow walk right past me. Uh, what do you think you're doing? My dog is a fat dachshund, she's almost 11. And she still thinks she can jump onto platforms that are 5 feet off the ground. We never claimed she was smart. Just cute. My dog got stuck under our bed yesterday because he's tall for a westie and is pretty big boned. No idea how he got under it in the first place. And no amount of coaxing was able to get him out. I went, got a treat from the kitchen. And he manages to wriggle and leopard crawl his way out. I love watching my old man westie crawl under my bed. He seems so happy to do it. I adopted this weird little chiweenie in April. Her name is Pippa and I love her to death. But she absolutely will not walk through doorways. She'll walk outside on a leash, down hallways, through entryways, but not doorways. Also she yells at me when I come home like I had left her for all eternity and not the 5 minutes it took me to go check the mail. I think my other, older dog thinks Pippa is a dumb, but we love her anyway. What's the most useless argument you've ever had with someone that went on for ages? Okay so in 9th grade my friend would do anything to not be wrong. I don't know how it started, but the bread is bread argument ensued. He was simply arguing bread isn't bread, because it's made of many things. Like if you cut open your hand, there isn't hand inside your hand. But I kept coming back to that if I had a loaf of bread in my hand you would call that bread, right? Number. He said one would call that eggs, wheat, etc. The argument went on for years. You, bread, me, an intellectual, wheat, yeast, water, sugar, salt, butter. My mother-in-law tried to have an ongoing argument with me for two years about how while on a family vacation, I chose the restaurant we ate lunch at, and she wanted to be the one to choose. She didn't say anything at the time she waited until we got home. Every contact she had with me for two years after that she would get mad about something and bring up the restaurant ordeal she just couldn't let it go. Eventually she cursed me out on Christmas morning because she didn't like the Christmas card I had sent out. That was two years ago and I haven't spoke to her since and my life is way better now. 10 stroke 10 would cut her out again. Update. I just asked my husband if he knows if she is still mad about the issue because I haven't talked to her in two years so I wouldn't know. He said she brought this up to him a few weeks ago. So it still isn't over. She will carve it into her gravestone apparently. She cursed me out on Christmas morning because she didn't like the Christmas card I had sent out. Arguments like that are great though because you can have them in front of other people and they will, well, 
Should always side with you because it's utterly ridiculous. What color the department shirts should be. Even though everyone knows department shirts won't happen. Hour and a half derailment of a beating for the color of a shirt that will never exist. Damn it Kyle. Stop getting the old ladies worked up by suggesting Tangelo shirts. It's hilarious, but I want lunch. The only answer is puce. Only because it's a fun color to say. It's almost worse than saying moist. I argued with a kid for 10 minutes about how multiplying something by 1 doesn't change the value of it. This was in college math. Community college at its finest. An ongoing argument with Miso is that she claims I don't kiss her goodnight when I get home from work. I get home late, 1230am, and she's 99.999% out cold. I lean over, give her a smooch, and go to sleep. She claims I don't miss her when I get home, and is actually mad about it. She's out cold snoring in a puddle of her own slobber. How do you know what I do? Is this an elaborate ruse? My dad doesn't believe we see the same side of the moon. He thinks we see all of the moon's surface from earth throughout the year. I've tried to explain the physics behind this to him, and he never understands it believes it. Even when point the moon out to him, he doesn't seem to get that it is the same side of the moon that he always has and will always see. We have been arguing over this for about 3 years. I send him articles, draw diagrams, and share videos but he is just too stubborn. It gets brought up every couple of months in our household, and never ends well. My mother even made a rule last year that we aren't allowed to discuss the moon at family dinners because it never ends well. My mother even made a rule last year that we aren't allowed to discuss the moon at family dinners because it never ends well. That's hilarious. I'm a lance of air and you wouldn't believe how many people try to argue with me about where their property lines run. Even though that is the only reason this profession exists in the first place. You have to into account tectonic inflation if the property has been around for any considerable amount of time. I have a piece of land that has been in the family for generations. My great grandfather bought that acre with his bare hands and I've argued at length that it's now worth 6 square miles. There was a blog forum somewhere, I don't remember what it was called, but these two guys fought for ages over how many days there are in a week. It's a thing of absurdist beauty. I honestly don't remember how we got onto this subject, but somehow my friends and I started arguing about which Star Wars movie was the sandiest. Friend, episode 1 definitely had the most sand. Other friend, no way, episode 6 had way more sand than episode 1. Emmy. Well I think episode 4 has more sand than episode 6. Most of the scenes on Tatooine in episode 6 are indoors. Friend, you guys are crazy. It's episode 1. The pod race covered way more sand than is shown in episodes 4 or 6. Emmy. Okay first of all, there wasn't much sand, it was almost all rocks. Secondly, it was almost all CGI. Episode 4 had more real, granular sand on screen. Other friend, wait. If CGI is acceptable then I think episode 7 wins by a landslide. Tons of sand all over the place during the Millennium Falcon chase scene. Emmy. Okay, I will allow that episode 7 has the most sand if we count CGI. But I think episode 4 wins otherwise. Insert I hate sand quote here. Me and my ex got into it for a solid couple hours when GB was leaving the EU. She insisted that they were no longer part of Europe. She insisted that they were no longer part of Europe. This insistence happened a lot in English history. I once argued with my sister, a doctorate level biologist, on my front porch, loudly, for an hour, over whether or not chickens were mammals and whether jellyfish were animals. She was why I too drunk, and I was more drunk than I thought. I think she kept hearing warm blooded when I said mammal, and mammal when I said animal. Some kind of basic categorization error. She finally made her boyfriend drive her home, convinced she was right. I had a friend tell me you can get into any school long as you can prove you can afford to get in. I argued with him that is completely ridiculous and if that was the case, what were the point of grades and he responded there only for financial aid. This argument actually went on for weeks. Every time we saw each other he'd bring it up and remind me how stupid I was. He was a straight D student and went to the military and was telling me he was going to use his GI Bill to go to UC Irvine or Stanford. 
I have to assume he was conflating the idea that someone who is supremely wealthy can often go to any school because of their wealth and in spite of their grades. Which isn't really a rule, but is something that happens often. My friend and I had an ongoing argument for about 3 or 4 years regarding the best place to retreat to in the case of a zombie apocalypse. I believe creating a bunker is a dangerous thing to do, as zombies are extremely good at waiting. That's what they do best. They just sit against walls and push forever. He sincerely believes that creating a fort at Costco would be the best bet, because you would have a massive building with tons of supplies and a giant fence to guard the entrance. While hard to execute, I feel that it would be safer to spend more time scavenging and moving around a bit and waiting out some of the chaos before hunkering down. Clearly the best place is a tropical island that you can grow food on. I had a solid 30 minute conversation with a classmate about how Taiwan is not a continent. It sounds ridiculous but for the entire time we were telling him it's a country and we had to explain how continent and country is not the same thing. Well, except Australia, sort of. This lasted about a week. I argued with someone about whether or not different color M&Ms taste different. He claimed that the brown ones tasted the worst and that the blue ones tasted the best. I claimed that they all taste the same. The argument ended in a stalemate. What is the correct term for a Mars bar, when you only have one? I'll tell you what it's not, Ma bar. Me and my friend still argue about this. Depends who it belongs to, it's either Ma bar or your bar. A friend of mine was convinced that the MLB has a rule that visiting teams have to wear grey uniforms and home teams have to wear white uniforms. Argued for a half hour, then whipped out my phone and started showing him pictures of the Blue Jays, Reds, Mullins, etc. And he still wouldn't let it go. Oh, those are just special one-offs. To this day, he's convinced he's right. He claimed that Iraq wasn't in the UN because of their civil war. I tried to show him the proof that they were indeed a member state but my official sources were, according to him, faked. Fun fact, this was after we performed an UN roleplay, where Iraq was a delegation but the leaders decided against it in favor of having Syria. LOL my friend doesn't believe narwhals exist. The Wikipedia pages are fake, to be fair. They're kind of elusive, so the only videos of them I could find were grainy. I posted this on Reddit a while ago and people thought I was insane for even associating with this person. Every once in a while my boyfriend gets a little conspiracy theoristy. He asked me have you ever thought about why we only see one side of the moon? Like that's all we see. Have you ever questioned why that is? So I looked it up, and we learned that the moon is tightly locked with the earth. His response? That frickin' bulls. Okay. So I'll look at Google Scholar and find several sources from a pen or whatever. That's a university and they have an agenda. Still bulls. We got into an argument about this. I was like dude. What agenda for frick's sake. It's space. Could anything be more non-partisan than space? It's an actual ongoing argument. And he was pretty triggered when I told him he's bordering flat earth for crap. That Poland and Ukraine aren't the same place. In Poland eating at a Ukrainian restaurant. Someone thought that we were at a Polish place as they thought Ukraine was Russian for Poland. Incorrect. Is all Russia. Not me, but an old buddy of mine was arguing with his then girlfriend over whether that Bonnie Tyler song was called Total Eclipse of the Heart or Bright Eyes. She insisted it was called Bright Eyes, because it was in the lyrics a lot. My buddy, always known for being kind of a putz, made a big theatric about googling each title of the song to prove her wrong. The argument got pretty heated too. They started shouting at each other Lmeo. They really did not date for very long. They really did not date for very long. Every now and then they fell apart. Whether or not a quiche with rice in the filling can still be called a quiche. Barbarians. Rice doesn't go in a quiche no matter what circumstance. I would argue that since a quiche can have a lot of things put in it, you would call it a quiche even if the things you put in it are wildly inappropriate. Like... If you put rice on a pizza, I wouldn't say this is no longer a pizza but I would say this is freaking wrong dude. Discussed the definition of religious with a guy for hours. Or well tbh the argument was mostly about whether the definition was relevant when I was gonna answer the question. Are you religious? I had an argument that spanned a few months with a friend. 
He thought Dwayne The Rock Johnson was the coolest guy of our time. I thought it was Ryan Gosling. We argued about it for a while, and somehow it because the competition about who could find the most specific image of that actor doing something. I'd ask him do you wanna go to the movies with a picture of Ryan Gosling eating popcorn or something. He'd respond yeah, let's watch Man of Steel with a pic of The Rock dressed as Superman. Unfortunately, there are pictures of The Rock doing everything. So by the metric we chose, The Rock was clearly the better of the two. Seriously, look up a picture of The Rock eating breakfast. At the hospital. At Disneyland. Flying maybe. I had to admit, he is probably the man who's got the most pictures doing different things. I love the resolution to this argument. Dwayne has more pictures him doing crap. He wins. Kudos for admitting defeat. Though some people try to change the rules when they lose. When my husband and I first started dating we had a stupid argument about which ending to the anime in Genesis Evangelion was better. Eventually he declared, you're wrong just like that idiot on Usenet I used to argue this with. I was that idiot on Usenet. We realized we'd been arguing about this since 4 years before we started dating. That's kinda brilliant. I love it. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'll let you know when the argument ends. I think they call that retirement. Now that I think of it. Over the weekend, I was at a bar with my brother and his friend. Somehow, the ladies on the TV show How I Met Your Mother came up. I said, which would you rather date me with, Lily or Robin? Within minutes, the entire bar was being polled, with the bar owners cleaning off a chalkboard to keep tally for us. It went on for hours. Final count I saw was Lily 32, Robin 28. I had a long drive that night, so I had to jet before it got too heated, but it was a blast. Had an argument with a co-worker that it was possible to drive to Mexico. Two days and many co-workers telling her you were able to drive from the United States to Mexico and she gave in. Or maybe just stopped arguing. Sweat to everything I cherish she actually believed you could not because of the thick black line separating the two countries on maps. You see you can drive across the thin ones like the markers for states but the thick ones were big walls. This was pre-Trump. Also took some convincing that there were more than just the two time zones that told her when to watch TV shows. Dumbest person I've met. She did believe Alaska was the highest point in the USA but based solely on the fact it was the highest on the map. My friends and I have a group chat. The four of us went through a phase where we'd kick each other left and right for peers off. My friend and I, let's call him T, would get Peter all heck because our other friend, N, would argue for the sake of arguing. He would have no point, no end game in mind. He would just argue to the sake of arguing. When I say he would argue, it would just be to pee us off. He argued for us for an hour straight how TV shows don't require plots or character development, just funny scenes. And it hit a point where he said he was entitled to leave our messages on rebuy even though we'd ask a question directly pertaining to him. Such as, are you coming with us to the movie? Seen by N. Please answer. I don't freaking have to if I don't want to. We had an intervention for him at one point, where he said he couldn't be a pushover. He argued with his best friends over nothing for 4 months all because he didn't want to be considered a pushover. I had a very long argument with one of my friends about the 2014 Godzilla. It got surprisingly heated and we didn't talk for a couple of days afterward. For the record, I really liked the movie and he hated it. My dad is a staunch defender of the social contract and is fully armed and prepared to rise up against the government should the need ever arise. He also, until a few months ago, thought that it was called the social compact. Given that he has extensively studied the document and knows the ins and outs of it intimately and understands it better than any liberal scholar with a fancy degree, or someone studying to be a liberal scholar with a fancy degree, aka me, while I was mumbling to myself and studying my flashcards for a history test, he overheard me talking about the social contract and informed me that I was very wrong, that I even had the name wrong, and this, 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 etc. I figured that he'd somehow misheard me and told him that the name was, in fact, correct. I showed my my card with the words the social contract neatly spelled out. He told me that I was still wrong. So I pull out my phone and google the social contract, show him the wiki article, the first thing that popped up. Well that's still incorrect. People can edit wikipedia. Don't I know anything? 
It's inherently unreliable. Agane. I pull up another website which still says the social contract. And then another. And another. After 45 minutes of pulling up website after website detailing the fact that this document that my father claims to have studied extensively and in fact the name that I have always known it to be. He finally relents that, perhaps. He was incorrect about the name, but the fact of the matter still stands. Liberals are all idiots who don't know anything and the youth of today is doomed. He now claims that I made the whole thing up and that he's always known that it's called the social contract. TL. DR. Don't argue with crazy people. I've found 99% of people who throw out civics 101 phrases like social contract no jack crap about political philosophy on anything but a shallow as frick level. Not me, but my boyfriend and his best friend have had almost a decade long feud about whether outer space is inside or outside. All I have to do is slightly bring it up and they can argue for hours about it. I once had an argument with my boyfriend about whether modern art was a total ripoff created by a system, or if we are free from the system and everyone just pay what we think it's worth. We were at a bar with friends. We started screaming at each other. We did not talk on our way home. I slept on the couch. We didn't talk again until late afternoon the day after. None of us really care that much about art, so it's really weird. We were mostly just embarrassed. I still don't know where it came from. The purpose of modern art is to cause a reaction. So modern art won. My aunt insisted on driving to the post office to buy individual stamps for each and every letter or bill she was mailing. She also insisted on handing the stamped envelope directly to the postal clerk to be sure it would be properly processed, rather than just placing it in the letter slot. I tried to explain that she should just buy a book of stamps and place her stamped mail in the mailbox on the corner, like everyone else. But no. She drove about 12 miles each way to the post office to buy one stamp at a time, and then hand each piece to the clerk, even if she had to wait in long lines in the lobby. Maybe she was bored, or she had the hots for someone who worked at the post office. An argument about Shark Tale vs. Finding Nemo, with my friends, thankfully, X. The crux of the argument was that Shark Tale was clearly better than Finding Nemo based on their trailers. I had seen Finding Nemo, she hadn't. She refused to accept that it could be better than the quality humor that was exhibited in the trailer for Shark Tale. She called me a loser and a bee and various other colorful words. This devolved into a 20 minute or so yelling match which ultimately ended with her crying and saying me glaring at her reminded her of her abusive dad and I was such an butthole for doing that. TL. DR. Frick Shark Tale bro. Nothing wrong with Shark Tale, but objectively way more people like Finding Nemo. My friend and I have been in a 3 week long debate about whether Spark or Data would be the better lover. Data, obviously, he is fully functional and programmed in multiple techniques. Definitely Data. Pictionary. Backpack is still a trigger word for me in the so. She drew what looked like a backpack. So I said backpack. She shook her head, so I said back, pack, in rapid succession, but with a pause between the two. She shakes her head. The other team yells pack and pencils go down and her arms go up. Why would you say backpack again? I just told you that wasn't it. I didn't say backpack again. I said three distinct words. Backpack, back, then pack. No, frick all of you, we're taking that point. Put your stupid little cube back, do over at best. Where are you going? We argued for an entire drunken night, and the ensuing morning and still the occasional get together about what is better, the phrase freaking good or the best. We even asked on Quora to try and get some closure. The best has to be better than freaking good, it's the best. When I was dating my ex she tried to argue that the human penis has a bone. B I have a penis I think I know this better than you. A buddy and I spent hours arguing over whether or not WikiLeaks is a journalistic institution. I said they're not. We both agreed that they deserve First Amendment protection. It was just a semantic argument over whether they are journalists. Comma journalism. Comma the activity or profession of writing for newspapers, magazines, or news websites or preparing news to be broadcast. I'd argue that WikiLeaks is a documents disclosure service. 
abusive and toxic group of friends that got mad at me cause they thought DBT was a scam. I patiently tried to explain how much it's helped me but they got even angrier and said I need to stop going. I stopped answering but they kept going and even sent a screenshot of someone agreeing with them. Not sure why my life choices made them so angry when it didn't affect them. My roommate and I have been arguing for days about if you can build a machine to violate the weeping angels by setting it up while they're frozen and turning it on when you look away. I say no way. Me and a guy I met at some club had a couple of drinks, and somehow we ended up discussing the color of my shirt. I said it was dark blue, but he insisted that it was black. We went from the color of my shirt and discussed colors in general for like 2 hours. The discussion ended when the club was closing. Never seen him after that. We would probably have lasted a maximum of 10 minutes sober and with proper lighting. It was yellow and white. Got into an argument with some ex friends about wait for it if an egg is considered a protein source my point of view or a vegetable for some reason all four of them thought that because they had had eggs in their salads for their whole lives also does mars have a lower or higher gravity than earth i can forgive that one but the eggs though took me two hours and internet to convince them the color of my hair birth doctor records parents and myself it's brown Girl in school who was dead serious by trying to get people on her side including the teacher, who didn't care. She was getting upset that people were not agreeing with her saying they are all wrong. I can see it, it's black. How? Why? I? This is the moment I knew there were really people that dumb in the world. Three years ago, I was in college and was dating a girl long distance. It was very well known I had been dating this girl for a number of years. I ended up making a lot of female friends because of this. Women felt safe around me since I wasn't constantly hitting on them. One of my best female friends and I had a long running joke where we would poke each other in the chest. It was never sexual despite the fact I was touching her boob. It was supposed to be quirky and weird. My girlfriend was aware of the joke and was okay with it. Eventually my girlfriend and I break up. It was fairly public and I was afraid a lot of my female friends would be worried to continue having a close relationship, because the girlfriend buffer was now gone. I started taking steps to make sure my female friends knew I respected them, and was not looking to make things awkward. One of those steps was telling my friend, it may be seen as inappropriate for me to continue touching her breast as a joke. She had a boyfriend who was skeptical of my new intentions too. She went ballistic and refused to talk to me for like a month. To this day it's a sore subject. Teachers of Reddit. Have you ever looked up past students online to see what happened to them? What are your most interesting discoveries? One of my former teachers told me a story about two former students he had. He didn't intentionally look anyone up, but he and some friends went to a strip club while they were in a bigger city for a convention. Two of the girls dancing were students who had graduated from his high school a couple of years before. It was awkward. This sounds like the start to a terrible porno. To reverse polarity here, one night I was watching to catch a predator with my girlfriend, now wife, and my high school biology teacher ended up being one of the guys Chris Hansen busted in the episode. Big WTF moment for me. Looked him up online and found out the extent his crimes. Turns out my 8th grade homeroom teacher and her husband would like have boys over at their house and seduce them or some crazy crap like that. She was a nice, older lady. I think most of this happened when she was the young and hot teacher years ago. One of my students is in prison for attempted murder. Another student went to prison for kidnapping and attempted murder. 8 of my students became teachers themselves. Three more are in college training to be teachers. One student even named his baby after me. You must have had an impact. I was a very young home tutor. I was 19 stroke 20. And I would teach middle school going kids. Last year I went up to check up on some of my students. One boy, who was constantly getting low grades but was very smart, managed to get into one of the state cricket teams. The academically smart kid turned out to be a drug peddler and the last I heard was that he was always on the street doing M. Would have been 10x better if he was doing math instead. My aunt was a phys ed teacher for decades in our local school system. 
must have had thousands of students go through her classes. When she was in her late 50s, still teaching, she went to a friend's bachelorette party. It was hosted at a house, with a bunch of middle-aged women have wine and chatting in excitement for the pending nuptials of the bride. As the night went on, the doorbell rings, and a pair of incredibly fit young men enter the residence. Some music starts playing and the men start stripping. As these strippers are working around the room dancing with for the various ladies my aunt has a sense of recognition of one of them but can't quite place it. As he's dancing with her he shouts out he I miss. Last name. Nice to see you. I was in your pay class two years ago. My aunt and her friends start cracking up. Laughing so hard. But she was also kind of embarrassed. Apparently the kid was keeping himself in great shape. So her fitness lessons must have been effective. She should have given him a thumbs up and said, A plus, good job. One kid was convicted of murder. It was a fight between two drunk kids and one of them got knocked out and didn't wake up. It's a dang shame on all accounts. This student was a particularly nice kid. Most of mine are happy souls with a smile on their face and family and friends they love. They have jobs, are stay at home mums etc. If I am lucky enough to see them and they remember me we share funny anecdotes from when I taught them. I just enjoy being remembered and seeing them makes me so joyful, especially if they are happy with their lives. Success should be measured in happiness. Great answer. You sound like a real positive influence keep it up. I taught intermediate school for a short while in the early 90s. I had a student who was really a great kid, courteous, smart resourceful and funny, just an all around pleasure to be around. I recently met someone with the same last name as him, no relation, so it made me curious as to what my former student was up to. Did a google search, and it turns out, he is a lobbyist for the sugar industry. Man, I wonder what went wrong in his life for it to turn out that way. JK, I'm happy for him. One of my kids is now a celebrity in the Philippines. On the more mundane end of the scale one of them is now back and a colleague on the staff. I see one of my former students living in a box near the exit I take from highway to get home. Very sad. You know Taylor Swift? Well I never taught her, but I did teach a student who went on to become a surgeon. I found out like you would expect. I went in to get some routine surgery done. And during the pre-surgery consultation I thought I recognized him as one of my former students, but didn't want to say anything because he didn't seem to recognize me. To be fair, I have lost a lot of weight and hair since he would have last seen me. I went home and looked him up and sure enough it was him. I thought at first it was funny that he of all people went on to become a surgeon, but in retrospect, it actually makes a lot of sense. He was always a good kid and sharp as a tack, but had so much energy and was very fidgety. He was also a fairly advanced cellist if I remember correctly. I always assumed he would go into a trade because he was clearly not suited to a 9-5 desk job, but that would probably be a waste of his potential. I asked him about it in the post-operation consultation and he said he was going to go into plumbing. But in year 12 he sat the UMAT, Australian aptitude test for entry into medicine just to see what he would get, and scored high enough to get an interview. From there he just went along with it, eventually ending up graduating and becoming a surgeon. TL. DR. Not every student in this thread went on to become a murderer. Depends on how many patients he has lost. Kidding. Glad both of you are doing well, and that you got some extra good news post-op. I called CPS on a few occasions for a child that I thought was being neglected, and as far as I know, CPS never looked into it. I received confirmation that they were still enrolled in school, so at the very least I know they're not dead. I found out he'd become a grandfather, at 31. On a lighter note, a different girl, who lived in government housing and would sometimes come in without shoes. Got a scholarship to the state college and then paid her way through graduate school at UC Berkeley. She has a great job, a private ski lodge in Vail, and her son may qualify for the 2020 Olympics in synchronized diving. My mum became a step great grandmother at 52. So not the question and not the reverse. Maybe a side slide? I wasn't popular in high school and hung with an odd crowd. Well one guy was clearly smarter than anyone in my public school. Like Sheldon smart in a room full of ants. 
Anyways, I'm looking into why I didn't get invited to my 10 year reunion and remembered my old classmate. Decide to look him up. He has 4 PhDs in various scientific fields, working on a fifth. He's written about a half dozen books on physics and other topics way over my head. And just broke into the multimillionaire club. Was cool to see he was doing well. Looked up the ones who were at the top of the class. The surprising outcome was that the brightest ones did not do the best. One who was a Harvard grad with PhD in Anthro, ended up in the EMS Govt services and retired from there. Another was the brightest in the class and does videos and sound performances. Highly gifted in music, math and intellectually, but unknown, except locally. However, those in a gifted to low genius range outperformed their brightest schoolmates. Five became MDs. One became one of the top lawyers in the nation. A second became the CFO of a major oil gas company, Yukus, whose personal net worth is likely in the $100 million range. He got a settlement in the world court for $50 billions from Russia for the Yukus shareholders and others, which is being enforced, with $5 billions recovered so far. Another became a college prof in Portland, and four became lawyers. Another became a well-known writer and director in TV, Grey's Anatomy, for instance. The last has created a working model of higher brain outputs, and realize a way to combine most all human knowledge into a single, unified model, aka the holy grail of the sciences, a toe. It explains what's going on inside brain and outside, events in existence. Furthermore, the number of children per person was in the 0-2 range 6 had no children. Only 3 out of the 25 had 3 or more kids. It's hard to say if this is generally found, but it's an indication. These are some of the people of a single class in a small central US town. One of my classmates moved away after freshman year and when I looked her up senior year she had given birth to 4 kids. I guess she had one of them sophomore year and then had triplets junior year. I was at a Starbucks the other day and saw a guy who looked just like one of my students from a few years ago. So I went on Facebook with friends. He's in his 20s now, and went to see if it was actually him. It wasn't, but apparently I had missed something in his life that turned him into a crazy, Christian fundamentalist, climate change denier, racist, bigoted hate spewing butthole that he had become. He used to be a really nice, very intelligent well rounded kid, but now he's a completely different person. I'm still friends on Facebook with him. I want to keep an eye on him to see if he swings back. Not a teacher, but looked up my, only, classmate in 3rd and 4th grade and found out that he was arrested for stealing a car and doing some other ronga lingo things. It was really depressing, considering the kid was pretty smart when he wanted to be. Ronga lingo. As part of my job I teach classes to operators at gas plants. One of the operators was shamelessly hitting on the sexy chemist the whole class. He later ended up in sexual harassment training finally getting let go. Another one kept showing up to class drunk. He eventually got fired for coming to work drunk. One guy got put in jail for dealing him. Then got his butt kicked by the Aryan nation for watching Family Guy one too many times. To guy who kept sleeping in class got his arm crushed by a drum being transported by a crane. Should have moved out of the way. Other way around. I found some of my old teachers, the ones who had the biggest impact. Growing up I had severe ADHD. Still do but it tends to mature a bit as one grows older. So I wanted to find them to let them know I'm doing alright and to thank them. Still getting there, but they were very happy to see I'm working on my masters currently. There was once a kid in one of my classes, when I did a long term sub job, about 5 months long, who was extremely smart but not very motivated, and he had a bad temper. I told him a couple times that I could see him doing great things, if he applied himself. Last year, I found out he killed himself less than a year after I had him as a student. Reverse here. At my old high school I found out that a math teacher, who I didn't have but my buddies did, was fired for sexual harassment of a good friend of mine's little sister, while in the topic, ah, uh, now X, football coach was fired while subbing for a class, unaware that his computer was projecting out to the class, he was an older gentleman, he proceeded to look up big titty cheerleaders, 
Mena caught this magnificent moment of Snapchat and he has since been fired. Kinda sad I graduated before all this gold. Not me but one of my teachers told us went to school with someone who the movie Pain and Gain is based off on. He was a trainer who tried to extort one of his clients and ended up killing him. He played football with him and said he was a bad kid. My 6th grade English teacher followed my group of students who graduated high school in 2011. Only 2% of the class graduated high school. A guy in my high school. He was 17 at the time was sent to prison after he beat his sister's bully into a coma with a 2x4 from woodshop. The kid who was put in the coma age 14 was a veggie, up until his parents let him go the week after. That's a good veggie tale. One of my students, who I only taught for a short time in elementary school, turned out to be a pretty successful college football player and is now in the NFL. One of my former students is in jail for murder. One of my students, who I taught in elementary school, turned up in one of my college classes once I made the move from K5 to college, and it's studying to be a teacher. That was pretty cool though it makes me feel old. I'm really bad with names so I don't remember them past a year or so especially full names. However, one of my students changed his first name to Dragon. That was amusing. Awesome to the maximum. Not a teacher but one of my classmates and his mom murdered a lady with a screwdriver, stabbed her over 100 times then stole her car. This wasn't my discovery but my mother's, who used to be a teacher. She turned on the TV and saw one of her former students Lennox Lewis. I shouldn't but here goes. At last count I have had 6 former students that have committed murder. It was a rough school. It been 6 years since I was teaching there. Where to start? Attempted second degree murder. One who got murdered. Armed robbery. Suicide. Rape. Molestation. Statutory rape. Array of others who have had small charges. All of these were different students. Taught behavior disorder for some time. One of my favorites, unbeknownst to me and many, killed herself a few years after graduating. I guess she was bipolar or had dissociative identity disorder. Either way, star student, had future in a so many fields, but had a problem that only few knew about. I am tempted to think did I miss something? Was X a cry for help? but there was just no inkling of any of it in high school. The world was her oyster. I worked elsewhere when it happened. I didn't find out till a year later. Want to call family and offer condolences but they are probably just now able to move on colon. One of my math teachers in high school told the class story about something funny one of her former students did. She said that she wondered how he was doing and one of my classmates suggested she could try to find him on Facebook she was older and didn't think to use social media to contact him. She says that's a great idea and because we didn't have a ton of stuff to do in class that day she decides to google his name using the computer at her desk. The first thing that shows up is HQ hardcore screenshots of her former student gaping his butthole and shoving vegetables up there. I know this because her computer was hooked up to a smart board in front of the class and literally everyone could see it. My former 7th grade student has a masters in nursing, traveled through Central America, and just had a baby. My former 1st grade student killed someone in a park in my neighborhood a couple of years ago. This kid I taught. Kevin, boy, I could tell you some crazy stories, stuff you wouldn't believe in a million years, anyway, seems he changed his name to Donald and is running for president. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.